know these guys don't do this for praise, but you don't understand how many hours a week these people. Let's give them a real round of applause. They have a, they have a servant heart. They have a calling in their lives of praise and worship. And that's what they're doing here. And they're giving it all to God and they're giving it to His glory. Come on. Woo. the main event. Let's give God some praise. Come on. Come on. Come on. We're we in a country that we can come together. Please, yes. We can get. We can come together and we can shout and scream and get excited for our God. We don't have to hide in a basement somewhere. We can do it right here in front of God and all creation. That's what we're all about, right? Amen. Okay, so I'm going to, if you would, please bow your head. We're going to open with a word of prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, once again, I stand in faith on all the prayer requests that were offered that came today and that we offered up prayer for, Lord. We lift them up to you. I lift all unanswered, unquestioned, or unspoken uh, of prayer, rather, right now in your name. We speak to El Shaddai, the powerful God. Yes. He is the power. You are the powerful God, the most powerful God. You've created all things. Our problems are insignificant to you, yes. Father. Yes. But you care so much about us that you sent your son to die for us on the cross. Yes. And you ask us to pray to you and you will answer our needs, Lord. Thank you. Yes. Oh, what an amazing God you are. Yes. Thank you. Lord, I ask you right now, yes. again, then sit down. Yes. Holy Spirit, come on up. Yes. Come on up and yes. show us your word right now. Let it be received in the hearts and minds of people that it plants a seed. Your word is a seed. Yes. Let it find fertile ground tonight, right here and right now. Yes. And anyone watching out there in internet land, they can be touched as well, and it is a transformation in lives tonight. We proclaim that in Jesus' name. Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Thank you. If you would, please, first, turn to Colossians 3. Seven. I have it in my notes, but you guys know I like reading from the Bible. Amen. His word. His word, baby. We have to accept Jesus Christ as our personal Savior to move forward, correct? He, he is the way. He is the life. He is our light that we can focus on and we can destroy the old man. So I'm going to read from this scripture and a couple more before we start into the main part of the message tonight because it's extremely important that we are born anew. So first, uh, Colossians 3, 7 through 11. I'm reading from the TPT. If you follow along, it's up on the, the, the uh, screen as well. That's how you once behaved, characterized by your evil deeds. But now it's time to eliminate them from your lives once and for all. Anger, fits of rage, all forms of hatred, cursing, filthy speech, and lying. Or lying, if, you, if I say it without my Texas accent. Say a, lay aside your old Adam self with its masquerades and disguise. For you have acquired new creation life, which is continually being renewed in the likeness of the one who created you. That's our objective, correct? Mm -hmm. Be renewed into the likeness of the one who created us. Mm -hmm. Giving you the full revelation of God. And we're going to get some revelation tonight, folks. In this new creation life, your nationality makes no difference. It doesn't matter where you're from. Or your ethnicity. Folks, it doesn't, mean, it doesn't matter if you're black, white, yellow, green, red. God doesn't care. Amen. That's right. Your education. If you have a doctor, you've got three doctors hanging on your wall at home. Or you've got a degree in pushing a broom. God loves you. 
and offers every one of us the same thing. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. And our economic status. If you're a billionaire or you got two pennies to rub together right now, he loves you. Amen. Amen. They matter nothing. For it is Christ that means everything as he lives in every one of us. Hallelujah. In the NLT it says, you used to do these things when your life was still part of this world. Now, too many times in my life, and I don't say this with pride at all, too many times in my life, I would, I started when I was seven, I gave my life to Jesus, seven, eight years old, Baptist church, and the Lord, my dad was pastoring, I can remember it like yesterday. I turned to my mom and I said, Jesus did that for me? You mean Jesus did everything that he was just talking about for me? And she said, yes, son. And I gave my life to Christ that day. Seven, eight years of age. But you know what? I was made anew, right? Here I am, clean, and fresh, the old man over there in the grave. Amen. But here's the point of uh, I do not take pride in. Every time there's a situation where I had temptation, come on, buddy, I need you. I'd open that box up, pull that old man out. Hey, you go out and take care of this. It's time to party. Those ladies over there, come on, old man. Get up. You go take care of this. Pretty soon, that new man was laying in the box, and the old man was living life again. Romans 6 6, if you would, is the next verse that we're going to go through. There's a progression here. Romans 6.6, 6, I'm reading from the NLT. We know that our old sinful selves were crucified with Jesus so that sin might lose its power in our lives. Amen. We are no longer slaves to sin. Hallelujah. But you know what? I had a choice. That's right. I had a choice. And I would pull out that spade, I'd pull out that shovel, and I'd dig that old man up again and again. We've all done it, but I'm going to point out myself. I did it 20, 30 times in my life, gave it to God, and decided that wasn't good enough. Come on, old man. Come on. You take front and center stage. And again, I, the new man, would end up in the box, and the old man would be out there living. 1 John 1, 6 through 7. So we are lying if we say we have fellowship with God, but go on living in spiritual darkness. I lived a lie for years, folks. Just going to bear it open right now. I mean, I'm not doing my testimony tonight, but I'm honest. I'm being honest with you guys. Okay? If anybody in this room has done it wrong enough, you're looking at him right here. Okay? We are not practicing the truth. But if we are living in the light as God is in the light, then we have fellowship with each other and the blood of Jesus, his son, cleanses us from all sin. Amen. Amen. We have to put the old man aside. Tonight's message, spiritual maturity. Okay? Now I realize that it's important that we get the milk. Everybody follow what I'm saying? The milk? We're talking about in the Bible, the scriptures. You saw it up there earlier with the little girl, the scripture underneath, that people aren't ready for meat. Well, tonight I'm going to serve you some milk with a side of steak and potatoes. Mm -hmm. Bring it. some meat. Bring it. Now, what are the two things that we need to do to keep the old man in the ground? Actually, let's not even keep it in the ground. Let's give him to the consuming fire of God and create Amen. that son of a gun right now and here. Yes. Okay? 
What do we need? To, what are the two things that we continue to talk about that we need to do from the moment that we wake up to have a a path to spiritual maturity? The word. We read the word. This is our owner's manual, right? Yes. Read the word, and what was the next thing? Pray. 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 Talk to God. Talk to God. We're going to also talk about talking to the Holy Spirit here in a few minutes. We have to do those things if we're going in the progression of this series, if we're going to build on the Jesus foundation, and we're not going to act, but we're going to become more like Jesus, and if we're going to spread the kind of love that is Jesus' love, we're going to have to grow up. Yeah. And we're going to have to stop digging up the old man. Yeah. So if you would, please, turn to Luke 8. There's a lot of scriptures tonight, folks, and that's why I've got your on your paper. And the, also on the back, if you'll notice, there's lines. If you don't have a pen, you need to get one because you need to start taking notes. Amen. The Holy Spirit's got them, going to talk. You guys need to take notes so you can go. If you don't feel like reading your Bible during the week, you can go back and read your notes and over the scriptures that we had in this, in this lesson today. Now, before I, I read this scripture, what's so important about that old man, new man scenario that I was just talking about? The thing that's so great about God is I sit in the back for just a few minutes ago praying with folks. Leslie and I, I looked at the back of C.W. shirt. Scripture on the prodigal son. First, I want to honor you, man. I appreciate you coming out tonight. This guy's got a, a biblical church in, in Eagle Lake. And if you guys are there any Sunday morning, Eagle Lake, you guys listening online, Open Arms Church, it's in the square in Eagle Lake. Phenomenal. This guy's, I, I, I pray to God every day that I can go through the scripture like this man right here. So I want to give him honor first. Okay? But the prodigal son story that I'm talking about, that old man that I talked about digging up, he came running back to Jesus when it got too tough. I could run 10,000 steps in that direction, and all I had to do was turn back in one, and there Jesus was. Amen. He was waiting right. for me you, every single time. Amen. Amen. And that's the story of the prodigal son. And that's what's important about tonight is that we lay that old man to rest permanently mm -hmm. and live in the glory of God and the things that he offers for us. Mm -hmm. So we're going to look at Luke chapter 8, verses 14 and 15 first. Now this is the, the, the parable here he's talking about is the, the parable of the sower. I'm skipping down to this, these particular scriptures because it's in line with what we're talking tonight. But this is a great parable and it's a good thing to read all of this uh, starting in uh, the very beginning of that chapter. But we're going to go down to verse 14. The seed that falls into the weeds represents the heart of those who hear the word of God, but their growth is quickly choked out by their own anxious cares. Every time I dug that old man up, it was because of my own cares. I was looking to the riches of this world and the fleeting pleasures of this life. This is why they never become mature and fruitful. What did we just talk about? The reason that we don't go to the next step is because we continue to dig up the old man. The seed that fell into good fertile soil, and that's why I prayed tonight that all hearts here have fertile soil in them, presents, represents those lovers of truth who hear in deep within, adhere deep within their hearts. They respond by clinging to the word, keeping it dear as they endure all things in faith. This is the seed that will one day bear much fruit in their lives. Amen. It says the seed fell into a good fertile soil represents those lovers of truth. I want you to turn to your neighbor and say to them, we are lovers of truth. <laughs> and what's the truth? God's word. God's word is the truth. 
Now, like I was saying, I for years would run as fast as I could from God. Year after year, I did this. And all I had to do was turn around and He was there. Because, okay, I'm going to do it. <laughs> he told me to sing this song from my youth. And maybe you guys that know, that know this can sing along with me so I don't feel like, you know, foolish. But God told me to do it, so it, it, it doesn't matter how I feel. I have decided to follow Jesus. I have decided to follow Jesus. I have decided to follow Jesus. No turning back. No turning back. And the next one's the world behind me, the cross before me. 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 No turning back. No turning back. Folks, we have a decision to make. We can let those weeds choke out the words of God and continue to walk backwards, and then he has to come and save us. And he doesn't mind doing that. But we have a choice. One of our superpowers, if you would, is choice. We have a choice to move forward into Christian maturity. So now... We're finally going to get to the, the <laughs> I've read a lot of scripture and God has let, and he leads me through these things. This is a progression into this particular scripture, which is 2 Peter 1, 5, and 8. Face, ladder, or virtue is the title of this beginning of this particular uh, scriptures. So, devote yourself to lavishly supplementing your faith with goodness. And to goodness, add understanding. And to understanding, add strength of self-control. And to strength, uh, excuse me, and to self-control, add patient endurance. And to patient endurance, add godliness. And to godliness, add mercy towards your brothers and sisters. And to mercy towards others, add unending love. Since these virtues are already planted deep within, and we're going to talk about that, and you possess them in abundant supply, when I read this, I was like, I don't have any of this. What are you talking about, God? I got an abundant supply? Yes. They will keep you from being inactive and fruitless in your pursuit of knowing Jesus Christ more intimately. So we're going to take this scripture and we're going to break it down. It says in here that we devote ourselves. Okay? Devote yourselves. The word that in Greek is spude, is the word that is used in this phrase, spude. We get the word speed from spude. He's talking about how quickly we need to do this. Amen. Not tomorrow, not like, I'll get to that next month, God. No, right now. It means go after it with eagerness, with haste. Give it the focus of your attention for the benefit it has for you. Then it says to lavishly supplement. In the Greek it speaks of ministering nourishment. So what God is saying here is not only do it quickly, but you need to do it quickly because of how good and nourishing it is going to be for you. Amen. Amen. Now, to break these down individually, I'm going to play, pay closer uh, attention to my notes here because I want to give you the definitions as we go through this scripture. It talks about add goodness to it, correct? Goodness and virtue are the same thing. The, and it, the definition is it's a <coughs> virtuous course of thought. That means every thought we have 
is good. Feeling in action, that means when we feel something or we take action, we are doing it in a good sense. And a moral goodness, any particular moral excellence, has modesty and purity. So we're doing thoughts, feelings, and actions. We have purity in that. Understanding and knowledge. This denotes a deeper and more enlarged knowledge of our faith. It also speaks of moral wisdom. Strength of self-control or temperance. I haven't heard that word temperance in a long time. In history class, the temperance movement, right? When uh, they did prohibition, that was part of the temperance movement. Okay? They tried to write self-control into laws, and that went cattywampus, right? Which means we master our desires and passions, especially our sensual appetites. That's, it's getting tougher here, isn't it? Does that does this already sound like, oh my God, God wants me to be good and virtuous. He wants me to understand and have knowledge and have strength and control and temperance. Oh my gosh. Then he's going to add, be patient. Patient endurance. Which is, by the Greek definition, the characteristic of a person who is not swerved from our deliberate purpose and loyalty to faith. So if something gets in your way, you keep going straight. You don't curve. You don't go off to the left, off to the right. God has a straight path for us. Is that not correct? Right. It's not bent. It's not, it's not looking like a tree going all different directions. He's got a straight path for us. And we use our loyalty of faith to stay on that, even in the greatest trials and sufferings. Then it says godliness, and that's plain and simple. That's reverence and respect for others. Then we've got mercy or kindness, which is having brotherly love, which is the word in Greek is Philadelphia. I'm not going to try to pronounce it. We talked about this a minute ago. I, I, I butcher these words. <laughs> I have to go to my blue letter Bible and hit, hit the little speaker sound like ten times. And then I have to write it out phonetically so I can remember how to say it. But I'm going to be, you know, the city of love is Philadelphia, right? That's where that word comes from. Unending love or charity, which we covered last week in great detail. This is agape love. This is love that you have for someone that puts someone else's needs above your own. Okay, so I read this scripture, and I say, Lord, how am I going to do all of this? Anybody else asking that question right now? Yes. It's okay to be honest. It's okay. Because there's an answer. There's a serious, awesome answer that's going to come your way. It said in that scripture that's already deeply planted inside of us, right? Mm -hmm. So, what's our get out of jail free card? Mm -hmm. <laughs> the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit. We see these things. God says you need to do this, right? And we're like, God, how am I going to do that? He's already given us the answer. He's already given us the things that we can do to make these things happen. The Holy Spirit. Now, Jesus said it when he was alive. He goes, I have to go so he can come, the paraclete, right? right. The comforter. Everything that the, that the Holy Spirit. That's what we're going to be spending the next Pardon me, spend the next few weeks doing is talking about the gifts of the Holy Spirit. Tonight we're talking about fruit of the Holy Spirit. But we're going to be talking about gifts of the Holy Spirit and what they can do for you. Because you have to understand, everything that Jesus had, we've talked about, did he, did he perform one miracle before the Holy Spirit came on him? No, no he didn't. He relinquishes our glory. We talked about that. The Holy Spirit came in him. He raised people from the dead. Maybe you understand this. Maybe you don't. Maybe some people I'm going to blow your mind right now. You have the power through the Holy Spirit to raise people from the dead. You do. You have to understand that. Through Jesus. Jesus' name, the Holy Spirit who is in you the moment you get saved. You have the power to do those things. And that's what we're talking about here tonight and in the next few, a few weeks. We're going to talk about the power that God has given you. 
I'm getting excited. I don't know about you. So, what did the Holy Spirit do? And we're talking about these things right here. Let's turn to Galatians 5. And it says up here on the board 22 through 23, but I'm going to read kind of a preemptive scripture here. I'm going to start in verse 19. Because this goes back to some of the stuff we were reading just a moment ago. In verse 19 it starts, The craving of the self-life are obvious. Sexual immorality, lustful thoughts, pornography, chasing after things instead of God. That's idolatry, isn't it? Yeah. Is it not? Yeah. Okay, I'm just making sure y'all are still with me. I didn't lose anybody. Manipulating others, hatred of those who get in your way, senseless arguments, resentment when others are favored. We all want other people to do better, but we don't want them to do better than ourselves, do we? <laughs> Everybody, anybody ever heard that? You're like, man, they were proud of me when I was, and I, when I became the same management level they were at. But when I became their boss, all of a sudden they hated me. Does that ever happen to anybody? That's what he's talking about right here. Resentment when others are favored. Temper tantrums. Temper tantrums are not just a two-year-old. I know we have. Our granddaughter was over for a couple days, and she had a couple of those. But I've seen full-blown adults, 60, 70-year-olds, have temper tantrums. Angry quarrels. Only thinking of yourself. Being in love with your own opinions. i got to always be careful of that. I love to hear my voice though, better than anybody else's, and i got to remember, i got to be quiet and listen to God. Being envious of the blessings of others. Murder uncontrolled addictions, wild parties, and all other similar behavior. I want you to understand the reason I'm reading this and started that because of what I just talked about. You've got power in you from the Holy Spirit to combat all of this stuff. Haven't I already warned you that those who use their freedom for these things will not inherit the kingdom realm of God? Now here's where the Holy Spirit comes in. And here's where so many of our problems are going to get solved. In verse 22. But the fruit produced by the Holy Spirit within you is divine love in all its various expressions. Joy that overflows. Peace that subdues. Patience that endures. Kindness in action. A life full of virtue, faith that prevails, gentleness of heart, and strength of spirit. Never set the law above these qualities, for they are meant to be limitless. You know, folks, it says in the Bible, do not quench the Holy Spirit, right? <clears throat> Anybody aware of that verse? Do not quench the Holy Spirit. Because the Holy Spirit gives us all these things. So let me break it down. We talked about goodness, right? Fruit of the Holy Spirit, joy, peace, patience, kindness, gentleness, and a life full of virtue. That takes care of that goodness that we were worried about. It's deep inside of us already. Faith that prevails will give you understanding. Strength of spirit takes care of that strength of self-control, right? Patience that endures wipes out our need to have patience and patient endurance. All of the fruit will impart godliness out in our lives. And if we have each one of these from the Holy Spirit, we will have the mercy that we need. The fruit is divine love, godly love, agape love, and all of its expressions will give you un ending love. Amen. You see where those two verses, those two scriptures, you had God say you need to do these things. But I'm giving you an answer. It's the Holy Spirit. Folks, we can lean on the Holy Spirit. Okay? We can pray to the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, please impart these things on me. If you don't feel like loving somebody that day, Pray in Jesus' name, Holy Spirit, give me your love. Give me your comfort. Mm -hmm. We have these things at our disposal. 
Folks, that's being a mature Christian. Not just like, always just like, hey, I'm going to give it back to God. Like I, was, I did for so many years, I'm going to give it back to God. Yes, that's important. Jesus is grace, the blood that he shed on the cross are so important. But as we grow up, and as we want to bring more people to him, as we want to develop disciples, as we want to witness. I mean, Wednesday night we talked to the youth group. Uh, Dona led the youth group, and Leslie and I were there, fortunately. And the, the thing that she talked to them about is sharing Jesus with three people. Folks, I'm going to give you that same assignment. It's not just for kids. It's not just for youth. Folks, you can go to where, I mean, I don't know if you like football. Some people, you know, do. I'm not really too big on the NFL. I like college ball, to be honest with you. Those boys are hungry. But you can go to work and you can talk about your favorite team for hours, right? Mm -hmm. How many has done that? I, I know I have in the past. We can go and talk. But how often do we talk about the one that we're the biggest fans of? Amen. Amen. Jesus. Right. You know, and they go, oh, they'll think I'm a fanatical. Good. Thank God. Yeah. That's what fan stands for. <laughs> you're, if you're a fanatical about something, you're a fan. Amen. You can paint your face and look like a um, Texan's color, right, with a little bull on one side, red, <laughs> red and blue on your face and all that other stuff, and run around with your shirt off screaming down the street. Oh, man, he's a football fan. But you start talking about Jesus. What? We've got to get past that. We need to be Jesus fans before we're any kind Amen. of fan. Right? Amen. And that includes being a fan of the Holy Spirit. Right. Okay? I, saw, I read, read part of a book from uh, Francis Chanabelis' name. It's The Forgotten God. It really woke my eyes up. Because we think of God the Father and God the Son, right? We think of that. We don't think of all the things the Holy Spirit can do, and that's what we're going to be doing over the next few weeks, is talking about what the Holy Spirit can do for us. And all we have to do is let Him do those things and be open to those things and stay in the Word every day and pray every day. And these things are there for us. Now if you would please turn to 1 Peter 1. One verse fourteen. As God's obedient children, never again shape your lives by the desires that you followed when you didn't know better. How many of us know better now? Can I get an amen? Amen. Instead, shape your lives to become like the Holy One who called you. For the scripture says, you are to be holy because I am holy. Amen. 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 So I hope you guys tonight... Y'all guys will join me next week because we're going to be talking about the nine gifts of the Holy Spirit over the next few weeks. And I hope you guys that are watching right now will watch again next week because you are all superheroes through God. You guys can cure sickness. You guys can take dominion over addictions. You guys can raise people from the dead. I promise you. God's told us that in the Bible. Who, who here believes the Bible? If you believe the Bible, you better start believing that. Because God is here and now, and He's given you the ability to do these things. And we're going to continue this next week. If you would, please bow your heads. Dear Heavenly Father, Thank you again for giving us this opportunity to get together. Thank you so much that we live in a country that we're allowed to get together 
in your name, in public, in open. And we can proclaim your, your name. And Lord, that you give us the opportunity to be fanaticals on the street for you. Lord, help me be a bigger fan of you. Help each and every one here be a bigger fan of you. That your cross, Jesus, your blood is the things that we color our lives with that people can see. So we have the love for everyone. We have the things that we talked about tonight through the Holy Spirit. Impart this onto fresh, fertile ground in our hearts tonight. In Jesus' name. If you would, please keep your heads bowed. We're going to have two opportunities tonight, folks. First, if you were like myself for all of those years, and you're tired of running. You're tired of running a race that you cannot win on your own and you want to give it back to God. You want to give it back to Jesus right now. I'd like you to look up at me and it has nothing to do with Ben. This has everything to do with you giving it to God right now. Amen. Amen. And if you've never, ever once truly given your life to Jesus. You've gone to church since you were little. Born into the church even. But you've never taken the opportunity to give it all to Him. You're tired of being in the driver's seat and you want to give it to God right now. God's going to rip off that rearview mirror and throw it out the window for you. And if you want to do that right now, please look up at me and give it to God. So if you would, repeat after me. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for sending your Son to die on the cross for my sins. Jesus, thank you for giving it all on Calvary. And Holy Spirit, I ask you right now to turn on the flames. Give me the things that you promised in the Bible. In Jesus' name, amen. Now, as the uh, praise and worship team sings our, our, uh, the call to altar song, Leslie and I will be here in the front. If you guys have prayers at this time, please come up. If you need something on a personal level, please come up and talk to us as they play. God, I give you all I can today. Please stand if you would. Scattered ashes that are in the way, I lay it on. At your feet From the corners of my deepest shame The empty places where I've worn your name Show me the love I say I believe Oh, lay Right. 
you to reach out if you need prayers or you have a prayer request at all please reach out to us here you can push the link go to our message we will pray for you we don't care if you're in this town we don't care if you're on the other side of the world we want to lift you up in prayer we want to pray for you we want to bring you to a closer relationship with Jesus Christ because he's a good God and he loves you he knows your situation he knew you you before you were born and he made you a miraculous, mighty child of God. So if you would, please reach out to us. Everybody else, if you would, please, I'm going to pass around the offering plate. 